สวัสดีครับท่านยังไม่ได้สังเกตนะครับผมไม่ใช่เป็นคนไทยซึ่งถ้าเป็นแบบนั้นผมขออนุญาตพูดภาษาอังกฤษวันนี้นะครับ uh, Good morning everyone I, I, I really hard to see everyone out here um, Today I'm going to talk to you about business genius and before I do that uh, I just hear a little bit about my background I I am not a traditional HR person I, I'm not an academic. Uh, everything that I do, you know, all the things that I'm focused on doing, I, I'm much more based in the in real world, trying it out, uh, what works out there. So I think my presentation is going to be quite a bit different than what you've seen from the past few days. I, I'm going to try and show you some of the things that I'm seeing around the world in different places that relate to HR, and then more than that, I want to kind of challenge you. I, to be able to start looking at how to initiate some of these things and use some of these things. So, personally, I own and run three companies. Uh, my time is split between three locations. I spend uh, quite a large part of my time in Singapore, uh, a smaller part of my time in London, and, and the rest in San Francisco. And my, I spend a third of my time doing consulting and training and coaching. Uh, but my biggest focus at the moment really is angel investing, is looking at high-tech startup companies around the world uh, that have the potential to grow very quickly, very fast. Right? Uh, and learning languages is my hobby. So I, if you thought I have a Thai wife or something like that, that's not actually true. My wife's Australian, uh, just like myself. So this morning I wanted to start off by telling you a little bit of a story about this gentleman, Steve Jobs. I'm curious, how many of you know Steve Jobs? Can I just get a show of hands? Okay, some people yes, some people no. I, Steve Jobs returned to Apple. He was originally one of the founders of Apple, but he got kicked out of his own company. Not a good thing to happen to you. But he returned to Apple uh, in the late 1990s, and he became the full-time CEO of Apple approximately 10 years ago, in January uh, 2000. Between January 2000 to now, he has radically changed that company. So much so that Fortune magazine just voted him CEO of the decade. In fact, they weren't the only magazine. Quite a few online publications and offline publications voted Steve Jobs as CEO of the decade. Why? Well, there are lots of reasons. The first one is that if you had invested a dollar in Apple 10 years ago, that time the stock price was about $7 a share. At close of trading this morning our time, uh, Apple stock was well over $200 a share. Quite a return on investment, and it's certainly one of the best performing stocks over the past 10 years. But what I'm going to tell you today, and what I'm going to get you to start thinking about, is that really why he's considered to be the CEO of the decade is that he's a business genius person. He's a business genius. He's a leader who thinks differently. He's a leader who does things differently. So let's look at some of the things that Steve Jobs has done. Well, first off, there's the products. And this is what most people sort of see when they look from the outside looking in at a company like Apple. I'm sure most of you know the iPod and the iPhone. I'm curious, how many, is, are iPhones popular in Thailand? Many people with an iPhone? Yes, I'm seeing some people nodding their heads. I, about a month ago, uh, Steve Jobs just recently introduced a new product called the iPad. I, the iPod totally revolutionized how we looked at music. The iPhone certainly changed the telco industry in many ways. And I think you're going to see with the iPad that it's radically going to change the whole publishing industry. And this is just the beginning. Because what most people don't see is that these products in and to themselves are not the key things that has made Apple so successful. One of the first things that Steve Jobs did was he took Apple back into the retail sector something that computer companies around the world were getting out of at that time. <clears throat> so in 
Something that now Apple has over 200 uh, retail stores around the world, and they've done retail in a very different way than people were doing it before. If you look at the, uh, at the picture, this is their, their, one of their New York stores. Absolutely gorgeous. All right. Also, one of their busiest stores around. I think you know, the, the figures are that there's something like 5 million people a quarter going through that store. Certainly interesting figures to look at. The, probably the biggest thing that he's done so far that we can measure would be iTunes. So I, I don't think there's an uh, iTunes Thailand yet, is there? I, I'm not sure if, if it's something that's been introduced here or not, but I, <coughs> in the past few days, iTunes has actually had its 10 billionth download. Since the time that Steve Jobs started it, it's had 10 billion downloads. This one product accounted for over a billion dollars of Apple's last quarter revenue. And here's the thing, is that he doesn't have to manufacture anything to do that. All he does is sell other people's intellectual property online and he generates all that money. This is a recurring theme that you're going to see with Steve Jobs. And for me, this is the key thing that really makes him a business genius. App Store. After the iPhone was introduced, I, Steve Jobs ha had a very smart idea, or the people at Apple had a very smart idea, where they understood that, OK, people were going to want to buy software for a store, but unlike the Windows mobile platform, and other platforms that went beforehand, they decided they were going to make theirs a whole closed system. And they were going to control where people uh, buy the product, how people consume the product. Uh, the App Store itself, even though it's you know, around about two years old, it's already had three billion downloads. Now, that, you know, that number sounds sort of surreal in many ways. But I want you to think of something. Every time that somebody buys a piece of software through the App Store, Apple makes 30% of the revenue. Again, not manufacturing any product, just creating a new distribution system. Steve Jobs is a business genius. And quite a few other people out there are business geniuses as well. For the last four years, I've focused on uh, a few of them, which I've writ written books on. And some of these people you, you might know, uh, Richard Branson, uh, Akio Morita. Do people know Akio Morita here? Do we have any Japanese people in the audience? I don't know if anyone's from Japan or not. Uh, Akio Morita was the founder of Sony, uh, and certainly one of the first people to really uh, be able to understand what it took to take a company international. He really changed the way uh, that, that I think that companies in Asia looked at taking their products to America and taking their products to Europe. And the last one is Bill Gates, I'm sure you all know very well. But there are plenty of other business geniuses out there. In fact, there are hundreds, if not thousands. And one of the things I want to talk to you about today is I want you to get you to realize that and get you to start looking for the business geniuses in your industry and in your company. So here are some that are quite well known. You might know Sergey Brin and Larry Page from Google. Anita Roddick, uh, unfortunately passed away recently from The Body Shop. Uh, there are some that you probably don't know as well. That each, in each of their individual industries, they've totally reinvented the industry. They've created new ways of looking at how people do business. So to me, these are the business geniuses. And for me, what I want to talk about today is what they are, what we can learn from them, and then how you as HR need to start developing business genius inside your companies. So what is a business genius leader? Well, I'm going to give you a definition. I'm going to say a business genius is someone who thinks, creates, executes, and leads at a far higher level than others in their industry, enabling them to get massive results. They raise the standards and expectations in their industry and change the way the game is played. 
there are very few CEOs that you can talk about that have done this. If we look on the whole, yet time and time again when we look at uh, companies that are extremely successful, uh, I know Michael spoke yesterday about Google, and I'll talk about Google a bit later on as well. I, we find not only that founders were business geniuses, but a lot of the people inside the business currently today could be classified as business geniuses as well. So what makes them up? Well, first of all, they're entrepreneurial. I, they take action and they focus on executing. They think in an entrepreneurial way, and I think many of us realize now in, in our company, even when we're working in big organizations, that we need to start getting people inside our organization to think entrepreneurial. I'm curious, how many of you have started any sort of program inside your company to do something like that? Any sort of training? Wow, almost no one here. I tell you, that is a very different result than when I talk in the United States or when I talk in some of the other countries. So it's kind of interesting to see. I, they're results driven. When I'm talking about results here, though, I'm not just talking about simple bottom line results. I'm talking about that they're results driven in making massive change. More than that, they're, they're driven by making things better on a very large scale. Clearly, when we look at someone like a Richard Branson, uh, a Bill Gates, a Steve Jobs, and Akio Morita, they were really all about taking their companies and focusing them to make a massive change in society. They defy industry norms. So what are industry norms? Whether you realize it or not, every single industry out there has a set of norms. They have a set of unspoken rules about how things get done, about how, what the products actually are, about what the distribution systems are. And people tend to stay and stick to those industry norms for, you know, for a long time, if not forever. Business geniuses have the ability to come along and realize that just because it was always done a certain way doesn't mean that we have to keep doing it that way. And they start to look at where they can bend the rules and sometimes even where they can break the rules and totally change the industry. A good example of this would be iTunes that we were just talking about. Right. For a long time, my, you know, my background actually originally was in Sony, it was in the music business. And for a long time, the music business was extremely slow at making any change to start selling music digitally. In fact, so slow that the pirates just took over. And the most efficient distribution systems for getting music 10 years ago were illegal distribution systems. That's what caused Steve Jobs to come along. And Steve Jobs you know, was driven by the fact that his belief was that you know, people who were honest would happily pay if you just had a service that gave them the opportunity to pay. So he defied the industry norms and he found it very hard at the start to go along to all the record companies and to convince them to actually do a deal with him to put their music on iTunes. All right, people look at Apple now and see, you know, as this massive company that has achieved all these things, but they don't realize that at that time, that was simply one guy going around to other people in the industry and trying to convince them to do a deal. By defining, you know, by defining the industry norms, it allows you to create new opportunities for your company. I think you as HR people need to start thinking about this as well. If anything today, I want my presentation to be almost like a challenge to you, to step up and think about, okay, how can you take some of these things and how can you apply them better to HR? They think differently. For the sake of today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not spend a lot of time on this and just say that they have different beliefs. They have very specific ways of thinking that are very different. I, my, 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 the thing that interests me the most is the whole psychology of people. I, when, you know, for, for example, of learning languages, at the start I spoke a little bit of Thai. All right. Most people, if they know the right ways to think, can learn a language very quickly within three to six months. Yet the conventional education system tells us that we need to take five years of doing it. You need to think differently. 
This is what the business geniuses are definitely doing. They're thinking in, in many different ways with many different beliefs.